This tutorial is for the purpose of introducing some ways to edit and transform curves. Several editing options are available by going to the Transform option under the Edit menu. To transform a curve, you can either choose the curve first and then choose the Transform button, or you can choose the Transform function first and then select objects from within the command, clicking the green check mark to begin transforming the entity. One command available is Translation. This moves the object around within the XY plane. There are two ways to translate an object. One is to move the object to a point. To do this, you must first select a reference point. It may be easiest if this point is on the object, but it doesn't have to be. Then, simply specify the location you would like that reference point to, either by clicking on the screen or by using the point constructor. Choose OK to accept this point. You may then click the Move button to translate the object in the same direction and distance as you chose to move the reference point. To undo a command you just executed, choose Undo Last. Another option besides moving the object is to choose Copy. This will leave the select selected object in its original location and simply make a replica at the new location. Note that the object you have just transformed remains selected until you choose Cancel. If you hit OK again, the last transformation will be repeated. If you'd like to perform the same transformation on a different object, choose Reselect Objects from the top of the dialog box. If you'd like to perform another transformation on the same object, you can simply click the Back button and then choose the type of transformation you'd like to do from the Edit menu without reselecting the object. Or, to perform a different operation on a different object, choose the Back button again and you will be taken back to the Object Selection command. The red X here ends the command. In addition to the Undo Last command within the Transformations window, an Undo command is also available from the Edit menu option. The Undo drop-down lists the commands you just performed in order and allows you to undo whichever commands you select. However, note that there is no Redo option in Unigraphics, so be careful when using the Undo button. Moving back, there are several other options available for transforming objects. For example, in Translation, instead of translating to a point, you can translate objects by fixed values in the coordinate directions. This option is under Delta Transformations. Note that this option allows you to translate the object out of its current plane. After entering the values, the rest of the menu options are the same as with translation to a point. Another transformation is the scaling command. When scaling, you'll have to specify an invariant point. This is the point that will keep its current x, y, z coordinates, and all the other points on the object will be scaled in relation to it. This point is specified by the point constructor or by choosing the point with your mouse. Then, simply enter a scale value and press enter if you want a uniform scale in all coordinate directions, or else choose non-uniform, which allows you to enter a different scale value in each direction. After entering values, the options are again the same as when performing a translation. Rotation about a point is another option for transformation. This performs a 2D rotation within the plane of the selected entity where the selected point is actually the point view of the axis of rotation. This point is again specified by either clicking with the mouse or by using the point constructor. When you're prompted, input the rotation angle in degrees, measured with counterclockwise being positive. Also, negative rotation angles are acceptable. After inputting this angle, the menu options are the same as previous transformations. The next option is Mirror Through a Line. This creates a mirror image of selected objects. 
The mirror ring line can be selected in several ways. The first is to pick two points either by clicking or by using the point constructor. This line then points in the direction of the second point. The second option is to choose an existing line from the screen. The head of the line vector is the endpoint nearest the pick point. The third option is to choose a point and a vector with the vector you can define the constructor. The vector constructor allows vectors to be made parallel to any of the principal coordinate directions as well as by choosing two points or an angle. Although other options exist, we will not discuss them now. Once you've chosen your mirror line and have accepted the command, the object is either mirrored or copied on the other side of the line at the same distance as the original object. Rectangular array is similar to the mirror command. A rectangular array is a set of instances arranged in a rectangular pattern based upon the current x-y axes. First, you'll need to select a reference point for the creation of instances in the array. Then select the starting point for the array. This point will correspond to the reference point on the first object and will be the lower left-hand corner of the array since the positive direction of construction is left to right and bottom to top. This location can be the same as the reference points, but does not need to be. After choosing these points, you must enter the x and y offset values for the array, as well as the number of instances in the x and y directions. Note that for this transformation, if copy is selected, the original is retained and the array is created in addition to the original. If move is selected, the array is created and the original is removed. A circular array is a set of instances arranged in a circular pattern based upon a center point and a radius. Again, you must first specify a reference point. Then you will be prompted to select the center point for the array. This is the point from which the array radius is measured. You must then enter the array radius, the start and end angles measured counterclockwise in degree, as well as the angle increment and the number of instances you wish to create. As before, if copy is selected, the original is retained and the array is created in addition to the original. If move is selected, the array is created and the original is removed. Rotation about a line is much like rotation about a point. First, choose objects to rotate. The dialog box that opens can be used to define the line used in the rotate operation. Options for creating lines are the same as those seen in the mirror command. Then, input the rotation angle. Note that the direction of the line is critical in the rotation because of the right-hand rule. Also, you will need to change your view orientation to see the effect of this command since it is essentially a 3D rotation. we will discuss is mirror through a plane. This is similar to mirror through a line. The command will then open the plane constructor. This dialog allows you to define a plane in space by various inputs. A few of these are defining a plane by two lines, by a point and a vector, by using the plane of a previously created object, such as the face of a cube, or by using one of the fixed given planes. These include the x, y, y, z, or z, x planes. Like rotation about a line, this command is also a 3D transformation. And that is the basics of transformations.